Hello Stormwater Designers and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos. We're continuing our TR55 series where we go over the software. In the previous video we went over how to download it, where to find it, how to get it open, and now we're going to take a look at some of the basic menus and operations in Windows TR55. First off I suggest liking the video and subscribing to the channel so you can continue to see our series on various stormwater software. We have a series on uh, EPA Swim and you should check that out if you're interested. So let's get into this one here. In some of the initial menus, we can determine who our user is. I put in CCS for our company. You can uh, in put the label for whatever your project is. If I just put test project, uh, it types it into the field there and maybe a subtitle. So uh, maybe I could say uh, pre-developed. project or something. This doesn't really have any bearing on the project. It's just for labeling purposes. Then you'd put like your state and then your county for TR55. So for example, uh, I'm just going to pick something at random here. Let's say Arizona. You could select a county and this will help indicate your project position or project location and also what kind of rainfall and hydrograph access uh, or data you'll have access to. So let's say I put, uh, let's find a, a larger county. Let's go Maricopa County so Southwest here. And uh, this will indicate the execution date of your project. And then you can also put if the sub area is expressed in acres or square miles. I'm going to leave it in acres for convenience sake. This will determine what dimensionless unit hydrogra hydrograph you'll be using for the project, the storm data source, and then the identifier for that rainfall distribution. Keep in mind, you can also fill in these fields here. Sub area name, let's say this is um, area one. I'm just going to put something to indicate it, the area description, it's a uh, paved area. Or um, since this is a pre-developed, I'm going to say it's a forested area. Then this is where you would indicate what the sub area flows to. Maybe it's reach or outlet. I'm going to say it goes to outlet one. It has a total area of three acres. I'm not going to run a project in this scenario. I'm just showing you how to set up all these various fields. Let's say it has a curve number of 30 or something and then a time of concentration of one hour or something like that. So that's how to fill in those fields there if you had a sample project. Now let's take a look at some of the menus here. So up in file, you can open a new project. You can open an existing project, save this project uh, wherever you're storing your TR55 files. You can save as, so you can save the project as a different uh, copy of the project. You can go to the page set up here. This is for printing if you want to print any project information. And then you can exit the software or view recent projects right down here. If we go to options, we can actually change the units that we're using in TR55. So right now it is in English units, but if you want to switch to metric, just go ahead and select that there. Windows TR55 will convert existing input data. Continue. Yes. So now it has changed. Uh, it looks like it is changed to HA. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the metric units are since I'm located in America. We use uh, English units here. So I'm going to switch it back, but that is an option if you're an international user. So that's how, to, that's how to switch the units, or you can clear the recent files. And for project data, we have quite a few uh, icons here, which are also listed here in the software. So you can access them here if you know what they are. If you don't, go to project data, and you can see the labels next to them. So for land use details, if we go here for our area one that we put into the project. We can see all the different kind of land use areas, including curve numbers and the soil type A, B, C, and D for that condition. So this gives a description of what that land use is like, how much of the area you're going to have for A, B, C, and D soils, and then that corresponding curve number. And then here you can actually enter in some form of a custom curve number uh, as well into the software. So you can scroll up and down to enter your curve numbers, or you could uh, just click the land use categories and it'll take you straight to that land use category. So that is also another option available to you for filling out your land use. You might have to use multiple variations of land uses. So if, for example, I selected area 30 acres. I already put a curve number in, so I'm not going to do that here. We will go through sample projects, however, uh, of where we do this, and I'll show you how that happens. It also gives you a label of the average percent impervious uh, for some of the different impervious segments. So that is how to access land use details. You'll be using quite a bit of that. Time of concentration details. TR55 has a method for calculating time of concentration uh, of your watershed. And so it has sheet, a couple different variations of shallow, con shallow concentrated and channel. And so you're going to be putting length, slope, the Manning's N for that channel, since the water is flowing through it, um, the area and square feet, maybe the wetted perimeter and velocity as well, as well as the time and hours. So you, you will be have to do that for your various TR55 projects. 
structured data. If you want to add some sort of a structure, like a pipe, a weir, or a spillway, you can enter information for that here if that is a part of your project. We will probably go into sample projects involving this, but that's how you access that menu. And then reach data. So we already know that we're using a sub area reach uh, outlet uh, here. So you put the reach name, the receiving reach, you put its length in, the Manning's N, uh, and the other pertinent values such as the friction uh, slope, the bottom width, and the average size slopes, and of course the name. And then you're going to want to click the accept button when you're done filling that out there. We'll, we'll go into more details on reach data as well. Then the reach flow path. So you can set up where the different reaches is going. You can kind of keep track of how your project schematic is set up since there really isn't some sort of schematic screen like a lot of other softwares. Um, you're able to keep track of that information here. Then if we go to global data, we can see storm data. And you see right here we have NRCS storm data. So to replace these storm data with the compiled by the NRCS for Maricopa Southwest County, which is what I selected, Arizona, click on the command button below. So I'm going to import that storm data, which comes with the software. And it has replaced the fields for the rainfall return period and the 24 hour rainfall amount in inches and indicated what the type of event is. So you can enter in a custom event, or if you have your county selected and you'd like to use the TR55 data, you can do that as well. And then for custom rainfall distribution, you can enter in your own custom distribution or one you have created. And then similarly, you can do that with a dimensionless unit, you know, hydrograph here, you can enter in your own or import one that you've created recently in TR55. This run button allows you to run the software for different uh, storm events here. So two year, five year, one year, all the way up to the 100 year event. And then this tab gives you help. So uh, maybe the Windows TR55 welcome menu, which uh, I have disabled but that is what usually comes up until you um, disable it. And then the Windows TR55 user guide, which you can see right here, comes up and gives you more information on TR55 uh, as well. So that is some of the basic menus and options in TR55. You can see other, the other things here, run, and then some output definitions, uh, the hydrographs you can view here, which I don't have any created yet, or if you want any form of quick help. And then right here you can save or print uh, portions of the project right here as well and it gives you the project date and time so that is how to uh, get an introduction to tr55 we're going to start building projects in it so hopefully that was a good overview you kind of understand what the software is trying to achieve leave a comment down below if you have any questions about tr55 and anyways we will see you guys next time